What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking five players you should not be drafting for this 2024 fantasy football season. So sit back, relax. If you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe. Give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We'll do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, let's get right into it. And like I mentioned, this is a list as of you know, I guess early June of five players we're not looking to draft based on several things, current rankings. As you can see, we've got the 2024 fantasy football draft rankings pulled up here via fantasy pros consensus rankings of a bunch of experts uh, based on PPR scoring, just so that you guys are aware. But like I said, this is based on ADPs. This is based on fit, based on injuries, etc. some other concerns. So yeah, uh, let's get into it without further ado. And these are going to be some bigger names, you know, within the top 50, I would say all five of them. So we kick it off with none other than Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills quarterback. And a lot of people, people's eyes QB one for this 2024 fantasy football season. And look, I get it. He's got the talent, right? I've got him as a tier one quarterback. I do hand up. Um, arm talent, rushing upside, rushing touchdown upside. The rushing upside is a cheat code for fantasy football purposes. But this is more so me nitpicking, honestly, the first overall quarterback being selected in general and how high Josh Allen is being ranked when you consider some of the losses that the Buffalo Bills have had on top of that. But what I mean by this is I feel like for fantasy football purposes, you never want to be the person that drafts the first overall quarterback. I said it last year, and I believe it held true. I've said it in years prior. Look, last year, probably somewhere in the middle of the second, end of the second is where you saw that first quarterback be taken. But then there was a gap. There was like a full round gap, round and a half, until that last tier one quarterback was selected. So last year was the group of Allen, Mahomes, uh, Jalen Hurts. Now this year, you know, similar type of group, but maybe you could argue a Lamar or a CJ Stroud can also be in that grouping, which makes that tier even uh, larger. And the reason I say you never want to be the first person to select that first quarterback is because, okay, if you spend your second round pick on a quarterback, I mean, you're essentially passing up an RB1 or a wide receiver one, which is a lot more rare compared to the depth at the quarterback position and you being able to survive a fantasy football season and, you know, even make it far and win one if you wait on a quarterback until like the late, late rounds, double digit rounds, something like that. So uh, that's the main logic there. You know, on top of that, look, with Josh Allen, you lose Stephon Diggs and you lose Gabe Davis. Sure, you've still got Dalton Kincaid there, which is nice. James Cook emerged this last year. Um, but what did you do to replace those guys? Well, essentially, you got Curtis Samuel, who, I mean, no slight against Curtis Samuel, but he's never been an elite wide receiver. You drafted Keon Coleman. Okay, you know, the upside is there, but like, what's going to happen? Uh, Shakir is there as well, but I don't think there's a true, true number one wide receiver on this team. And I'm worried that we're not going to see the same passing production from Josh Allen, from this Bills offense in general, as we've seen in the years prior. All those things compiled with the fact that, you know, you could do a lot better selecting the second overall quarterback or the third overall quarterback around two later. For that reason, to me, Josh Allen would land on this do not draft list at his current ADP. But let's move on. Next up, we've got Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Comes in at, per these rankings, wide receiver 15. But, you know, the uh, mocks that we've done, we've done a bunch of them so far. Typically where we see Mike Evans being drafted is the end of the second round. And this is in full PPR scoring as well. So, look, I get it. Mike Evans had a great season last year. He outproduced and uh, as a result is in a lot of people's good graces right now, but he's getting up there in age. And I, I still vouch that he's not this PPR type of stud wide receiver. You know, he's the uh, big target, higher touchdown upside type of guy. And the other aspect of this is like, 
are we really, really confident in Baker Mayfield duplicating all the success that he had last year? And, you know, it's great to see that he got the contract, Mike Evans got resigned, all these things. But look, Baker Mayfield, in his entire NFL career, he has never put two back-to-back solid NFL seasons. And look, maybe this will be the year that he breaks it, but I just think there's a lot of ifs here. Like, if Mike Evans continues to stay healthy, if the age doesn't catch up to him, if he doesn't morph back into more standard-suited type of wide receiver, if uh, Baker Mayfield... uh, has another good season. So for that reason, Mike Evans really, really scares me. And then when you compare him with the other wide receivers here, you know, names like Jalen Waddell, Nico Collins, I think that these are some more enticing wide receivers. And, you know, uh, on offenses where you have a little bit more faith, like, you know, that two is going to air it out, you know, CJ Stroud is going to air it out. Nico Collins, the top overall wide receiver, for Houston. So I think that there's some other guys here that get a nod above Mike Evans. And again, with the age, with the question marks at the quarterback position, Mike Evans right around the end of the second round, I think that is too rich for my blood. I would rather go elsewhere at that point in time. But let's continue to move on to the number three name on this list. And it is actually another wide receiver that is Debo Samuel of the San Francisco 49ers and I mentioned Debo Samuel in a separate video where we kind of mentioned like boom or bust guys and the more I've thought about it the more I'm kind of leaning Debo Samuel uh, could be in that bust category especially where he's currently ranked which is like you know 33rd overall top 20 wide receiver uh, basically a round three selection at the wide receiver position and um Similar situation here uh, with Debo Samuel, you know, he's a guy that, yes, he has produced in the past, so he gets love from that perspective. But if we go back a couple years where he had his first breakout season, um, you know, in San Francisco, a lot of it had to do with the success he had on the ground. I mentioned this before. Since then, though, like there's been injuries the rushing uh, usage hasn't really been there. And then obviously that can be accounted for with the addition of Christian McCaffrey, best overall running back in the entire NFL. So Debo Samuel not going to be used in that same way. On top of that, you look at this offense, it's absolutely loaded to the gills. The aforementioned Christian McCaffrey, you've got George Kittle, you've got Brandon Ayuk, you've got Debo too. You drafted a first round receiver from Florida and Persol. So like there are a lot of bodies here. Then you take into account that um, there's been trade rumors. So I'm really, really concerned about Debo Samuel here. I think you could honestly make the case that in terms of pecking order, he's behind McCaffrey, he's behind Ayuk, he's behind George Kittle, and what, that leaves him fourth overall? Like this offense, I get it, Brock Purdy had also a breakout season, but he's not going to maintain, sustain four fantasy-relevant weapons week in and week out. Like other than McCaffrey, and Ayuk, it's kind of a crapshoot afterwards, and I'm sorry, but a third round selection at the wide receiver position when there's other guys here, um, again, like a Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, Cooper Cup, uh, that DK Metcalf maybe, that you can look towards them, I think that those are much, much safer bets. I think there's too many mouths to feed, and even though that's maybe not a problem in real life NFL when it comes to fantasy football perception that is definitely a problem too many cooks in the kitchen it's a real thing not all of these guys are going to get you a thousand plus yards and I definitely see Debo Samuel uh, kind of being the one that sticks out as the potential biggest loser but moving on here uh our Uh, Second to last name, Devon A-Chain, running back, Miami Dolphins. So again, another guy that last year showed a lot of flashes. People got really excited about him. uh, But then injuries, unfortunately, kind of took away that excitement from us. I mean, hell, Raheem Mostert ended up being a top five running back. 
and he's still in Miami, folks. But A-Chain is by far and away the top overall rated running back for Miami in fantasy, the running back 11, 40th overall. And I, I get the hype, like, you know, Raheem Mostert hasn't really ever stayed healthy for a full season other than kind of last year, right? Uh, with some small exceptions, um, A-Chain is much younger, much less, you know, serious injury history, and he's got the momentum. But the Dolphins did also draft right uh, at the running back position, rookie. So he's an explosive running back. On top of that, you look at the coaches there in Miami, they come from that San Francisco line of head coaches, uh, coaching tree of before we got Christian McCaffrey in San Francisco, they were going with a running back by committee approach. They were going with a hot hand approach. So I would not be shocked at all. Okay, A-Chain maybe opens up as the starter or as the co-starter, but you know, if other guys are playing as well as him or a little bit better, like he's not gonna going to get the elite usage, the elite volume. And if the home run hitting ability that we saw last year, super high efficiency, and typically at the running back position, that is pretty damn hard to duplicate. If that goes away, um, folks, he ain't finishing as a top 12 running back like he's currently ranked. So, you know, I'd much rather look at some other running backs here like you know, Josh Jacobs, pretty much the only running back uh, in Green Bay. He's only one slot lower. Uh, Derek Henry, you know, more of a standard suited running back. But uh, again, he's pretty much got that backfield splitting it with just Lamar. Alvin Kamara, at least he's got the huge PPR upside. I have way too many question marks about A-Chain. A lot of other capable running backs there. I would rather pass on him for that reason. And then finally here, one Keenan Allen of the Chicago Bears. And with Keenan Allen, again, this hurts me because I'm a big Keenan Allen guy, especially in full PPR scoring. Um, coming off one of his best seasons, period. Absolutely dominated. Now goes to Chicago. You've got Caleb Williams there. And I think some people are saying, well, how could this not be a home run hit? You know, I think it's a similar situation with Debo Samuel. Simply put, there are too many guys here offensively. Keenan Allen is also the oldest of the bunch, right? The biggest injury history of the bunch. It's him, it's DJ Moore, it's Roma Dunze. And it makes sense why DJ Moore is ranked higher than he is, but you know, you can make the argument that DJ Moore could also fall in this category, honestly, but I'm going to give him the edge. Like he knows the system better. He's younger coming off a really good year. Um, so, okay. DJ Moore slight ed edge, but like Keenan Allen still ranked as a top 25 wide receiver. He, he makes me nervous. You know, right now this will translate to what a fourth round selection, depending on the size of your league. So, that com uh, combined with the fact that not all of these three wide receivers for the Bears are going to be able to get you over a thousand yards, over 1,100 yards. Like, I guarantee you that the uh, receptions that Keenan Allen has are going to go down. That is just natural. And I would say, especially towards the latter portion of the year, okay, I, I can, I'll concede here a little bit that. Maybe Keenan Allen has a decent start to the season, but when it matters most, guess what? When fantasy playoffs are approaching, uh, that's typically when rookies find their footing, and that's where we could see some more utilization of Roma Dunze. People have said that Roma Dunze kind of reminds them of Keenan Allen, could be used in similar type of ways. Uh, and for that reason, I could see the production start to dip right when you need him most for Keenan Allen, which is what worries me. And again, you combine that with the fact that Caleb Williams, as great as he is painted to be, uh, projected to be, he he cannot sustain three number one wide receivers. I'd even argue like two high end wide receiver ones uh, is probably pushing it. Uh, you've also got Cole Kmet there. Uh, they're going to use that rushing attack. They invested in that offensive line in DeAndre Swift as well. So uh, to me, Keenan Allen is a guy that I think that his best 
years are probably behind him uh, with the Chargers right now. In a, again, in a really good real life situation, but for fantasy football purposes, maybe better to look elsewhere. But with that, we wrap up this look of our five players that you should not be drafting for this 2024 fantasy football season. Um, if you guys enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin. Make sure to let us hear in the comments section, agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have. We'll do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, we'll see you guys in future videos.